to Apapo Visitor Center, which is where they use the rats to demine the landmines. It's only $3 each for the bike, so big savings for that, and we'll get some exercise. Right, we're, uh, we are at a Popo Humanitarian Aid Center, which stands for Anti Person Minda Ons Minda Product Ons Weekling. I didn't realize how big the landmine problem was in Cambodia until coming here. Um, since 1979, there has been 64,000 explosions in Cambodia and uh, it has left 25,000 pe people as amputees. So it's really crazy. In 2016, this CMAC team, government agent, Cambodian Mine Action Center or CMAC, they are created to double rats. They know about rats the best. I know this team since it was young. They use meta detectors. So let's compare between meta detector that these people use and double rats. A size of a tennis court. With double rats, only 30 minutes done. But with meta detector that these people use, it takes up to four days. When you use meta detector, you search, start searching, and then it gives signal, dee, 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 and then you stop with the shield and the armor you put, you start digging towards this, the object. Check little by little, and when you see the object, it's nail, bullets, nut, bones, waste of time. It's just metal. Yes, scrap metal, because meta detector detects everything that's metal. But the rats only go straight to the explosive object that contain TNT, so that's why they're fast. It's friendly, yes. And all the 61 rats that we have, they are fully vaccinated, so no rabies disease, no problem. <laughs> they don't have COVID, they don't have cold. Yeah. So, only us who may spread COVID. Hello, Valerie. I don't have banana. Okay. So now we started training rats to circle people in collapsed building. Yes, like in Turkey and Syria right now. <laughs> we train rats to control. <laughs> yes. The fun people, they are light, small, easy to go. Cute. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, have a boss we go to your friends to find out, but not go to work yet. You can go a bit further and take it. Getting his little harness on. It's another day at work for Valerie. Okay, so Valerie's like to work. We just want to get reward. They know. When you come outside at night, they want to Their rewards are, oh, yeah, are mainly uh, bananas when they team. when they smell the TNT. Yes, yeah, four bags and four bags and four big guys. So now you can see that TA and here. It's back, click, and then reward banana. Yum yum. <laughs> so when they detect the smell, they start scratching. They don't know where exactly, but smack when they get close to the object. Yes. They can go down, one meter down. Yes, sir, yes. They can detect one trillion of gram of TNT and one meter deep in ground. Yes. You know, just back close to the object, we know that is the place. With the dog, you know, you're not these are weird little guys, eh? But the rats, okay. I heard the guys saying before that they have to sunscreen their ears when they go work. It's kind of funny because they're bright pink. They have yellow teeth. <laughs> He likes the chin rubs, <laughs> or she likes the chin rubs. Regular war right, right. Ah, space. So now you should introduce them to oh. these rats. <laughs> yeah. ah, it's kind ah. of just a fun word. Look at this little rat. Her name is Sophia. There's 61 rats in Cambodia that they use uh, for the land mining organization. I thought there was more, so. I was a bit surprised to find out there was only 61, but it takes quite a few years to train them. They're smart little guys. They're from Tanzania. They're called African... Giant pouch rats. Giant pouch rats. And they're actually really cute compared to regular rats. I like them. And they live for what, eight years or so? Eight years. So they're one of the longest living rats. So that's why they're... They're good for this development project. Very smart little guys. Hello. It's 
these are some of the landmines that the uh, rats have been recovering. So, do you did you used to do the demining and now you work in the center, or what do you do here exactly? Um, I didn't work as a demine before. I work as a tour leader and tour guide. Okay. But, uh, with the tour company, we raised funds to support this NGO already before, so I know this NGO already. So during COVID, I lost the job, I left the city and just come back and got a job here. We know this place already. It's a cool job. Yeah, so here it's like a fundraising center and we spread awareness to many people. Yes, that is a good thing. Sweet. And if people want to help, how can we, how can we contribute to this? Do you have like a donation link or? Yes, if you would like to do so, yeah, thank you so much. You can go to our website, apopo.org. Okay. You can make donation monthly or yearly, and also you can adopt our hero rat. You can adopt any hero rat, you can do it now or buy online. Yes, you can just yes, please go to apopo.org. Okay, sweet. If anyone wants to adopt a rat, we'll be putting a link below and you can check it out. <laughs> and see the rest of our video. I'll okay. go through and you'll see some of them at work. Okay, anyway, thank you. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> So we just finished our tour at the Apopo Rat Center and uh, I was here in San Reef like 10, 12 years ago and I went to the Landmine Museum, which was really cool. And that guy there works for CMAC, which is another organization that works with these guys. And I thought it was really interesting how they're working together now. And here they train rats to dig through the dirt and find landmines. And then when they find them, they call one of the other guys who comes and digs them up and deactivates them. Um, Cambodia has a ton of mines, like it's crazy. I think there was over 6 million he was saying, and uh, they're all over the place. It's not just on the Vietnam border, they're all through Laos, and they're on the border with Thailand as well. There's a lot of unexploded munitions as well. And uh, I didn't really get that. We were talking to our guide here, and he's saying most of them were placed by the Khmer Rouge during 1971 to 1998, and they were putting it in rural areas that separate the forest from the towns, to protect their strongholds and the town people would stay in the town and the Khmer Rouge would stay in the forest and that would prevent anyone from going in between and the government forces from attacking. Super interesting but they were mining their own country but now that farmers and villagers they want to expand their villages, clear some forests for land and farming, they're stepping on mines and cows are stepping on anti-tank mines and lots of people are losing legs and stuff and it's just a crazy situation so it's good to see that they're doing something like a little smarter because the old way clearing with the metal detectors just takes so long it's not really practical to be mined here for centuries but it looks like this is actually working so it's really interesting and uh, I like it's good to see it's good to see they're making some progress in the decades since I was here